Hi everybody, Arielle with Arielle Paints. Today we are going to do a favorites video of 2018. I'm going to dig into my craft and go and I'm going to show you the absolute favorite things that you could not rip out of my hands if you tried. Some of which I discovered this year, some of which are probably going to be old favorites. But regardless, you're going to see the things that I love. I'm also going to throw in some beauty products because I've had a lot of questions about certain beauty things that I like and don't like and do on a daily basis. So I'm going to throw some of those favorites in as well, things I cannot live without. And I also want to thank you guys for subscribing, following me, commenting on my videos, and just being a part of my face painting world. I appreciate you guys so much. 2019 is going to be videos all focused on you. I have been looking at your comments. I have been looking at the suggestions. I know you guys want boy designs, so I'm going to work on that. Masks. Um, what are some of the other ones? I started a list. So a lion. I have a lion video that I filmed. I just need to edit. I know you want one. Um, so I'm going to pay a lot of attention to that. So don't stop asking me questions. The best place to ask me questions or to comment um, or just get in touch with me really is in the comments on YouTube because it's harder for me to follow some of the other forums. You can follow me there to see a lot of my designs that I do throughout the week and all my event designs or birthday party designs that I'm actually out on the job doing, I post there. So feel free to follow me there and communicate with me there, but it is harder for me to see all the comments there. So if there's something you really want to know or you want to suggest a design or you have a question, commenting down below in the YouTube comments, it's a lot easier for me to see those. So please don't stop asking me questions. I am really look forward, looking forward to 2019. 2018 was so much fun, and I had a great year. I hope you guys did too. So before I continue to ramble on, and this video is like an hour long, let's get into my favorites. I'm excited. Okay, so let's start with split cakes, because why not? Those are the most fun. So most of my favorite split cakes are global, which I started to use this year, and I really hadn't used previously and for no particular reason I just hadn't. Um, so anything Leanne's collection is by far some of my favorite stuff but specifically right now Neon Nirvana hands down love it. It's my go-to butterfly at festivals specifically because it has so much impact. Absolutely love Neon Nirvana. Um, the other one that I would say is a must-have right now is Summer Days because it's so different and it gives this amazing, like, tropical pop to everything. So this one I just got because she sent it to me. Thank you, Leanne. This is the Purple Pixie, and I didn't really know how I was going to use this besides I've seen people use it for leaves and stuff, and I thought that was brilliant, but I wasn't really sure. So I love this. I used it at a birthday party this weekend. A little girl asked me to be a fairy, and I used this as some kind of like deconstructed butterfly wings and then did some double dipped flowers, and she looked like a fairy, and I was like, this is brilliant. So this purple pixie, oh, any of the lands, one strokes, you can't go wrong, but these three right now are definitely some of my obsessions that I would want at an event. Um, the other one, which I believe this this and this are both global, I will put links to everything I can find underneath. Um, but as always, you guys know, Google it, you'll find it. But I will absolutely try to put links because <laughs> I know you guys like links. So these are the other two one strokes I love. Um, Naples and Iceland. Oh gosh, this blue. This is one you could not pry out of my hands. I am obsessed with this. It's so simple. The dark blue and turquoise and white. It's not that complicated, but the blues are just gorgeous. It's kind of dirty because I was using it. The white is actually much crisper of a white than that. Um, I am just obsessed. This might be my number one favorite one stroke right now. I am just like stupid in love with it. Here's another global one. This is Nat's gold collection. It's the only one that I own. Goal for 2019 will be to get more of Nat's gold collection because if I'm this obsessed with this, I have a feeling I'm going to like a lot of her other collection as well. This is gorgeous. This is a wonderful one stroke to do butterflies with. I love it for that. It's also my go-to 
for unicorn hair. So I do have an updated unicorn that I'm doing, the full face unicorn with like the horn and ears and stuff. And I use this for the hair and I think it's brilliant. If you guys want to see that, comment down below and let me know because I am not going to do more unicorn videos if you guys are over the unicorn videos. But if you want it, tell me and I'll do it. So Nat's Blue Wren is what this one is if I didn't say it already. I'm obsessed. I love it. It's gorgeous. Beautiful roses. You can't go wrong. I absolutely love it. Okay, so solid colors. I don't really have a lot of favorites. My Diamond Effects Black and my Diamond Effects White, which this one, this chunk, is loved and needs to get tossed. I have a brand new one. Um, but DFX Black and White, absolute favorite. I've tried a lot of other whites, and there are good whites and blacks besides this. These are just my preferences. I like Diamond Effects. It's my fave. Um, the only other solid color I fell in love with this year is this Superstar one. It's the darker one. I repot my paints with kind of doubles a lot of times because I just don't need that many solids. This turquoise is called Petrol something. I will link it below because I can't remember the name. And since I depot them all, I really am horrible with remembering the names of them because they're not on the pots anymore. Um, I saw somebody used a Sharpie and put the names of their solids on their containers, which I totally need to do. By the way, I get this question a lot. My plastic containers, this is the original larger plastic pan from the Craft & Go website, I just cut them apart because I like to hold them. So I'll like hold a solid color on top of a kid's face, you know, or head while I'm painting. Um, so that's all these are. I mean, they're, they're not, they're kind of flimsy and I like that because they're really lightweight. They're not heavy. Um, but that's all I did is I cut them up. Anyways, this superstar petrol shimmer, I think it's called. I'll make sure and list it down below. I am super in love with this. Goal for 2019 is to get more superstar paints. I think the only other ones I have are these greens, which are really pretty as well, but I don't use them as much as I've used this for line work. Brilliant. I'm in love. Okay, so let's talk about brushes, which this could be a separate video, so I've just picked a few to keep it short. Number one, the Face Painting Shop 3 quarter inch angled short. I love this brush. I'm obsessed with it. I have six of them in my kit. I use mainly this brush at events and almost nothing else. I love this brush. It is amazing. Um, Round brushes, low Cornell. I chose a number four because if I had to pick and somebody was trying to take them away from me, I would do a number four because I could get some decent tiger stripes out of it, but I could also get nice thin lines to do like an outline of a unicorn. So I chose a number four. A petal brush. I picked my Paint Pal Silly Farm Pretty Petal Brush because it is the perfect size. I have a larger one. I have flora brushes. I have the mini petal brush. This is the one I always reach for. It's just great. And being able to do double dipped flowers is such an impactful thing to do on a design and to really pretty it up quickly. So I love this brush. It's one of my faves. Um, next, I picked the Face Painting Shop's Dagger Brush, and this is the quarter inch. It's the smaller one. I prefer this over a flat half inch or quarter inch brush because you can do more with it. You can do stripes with it. You can do whimsical lines with it. And I also have decided that this gives me better roses. So, I pick this over any other half inch. It just has more diversity and I like using it. So if you were taking my kid away from me and I had to only take four brushes with me, which would be like terrible and the worst event I'd ever have to do in my life, but this is what I would, I would grab. Okay, so let's talk glitter. My favorite glitter is Mama Clown. This white iridescent glitter is gorgeous. I keep a pot of it in my kit so that I can place glitter on the face exactly where I want it. And if I only had one glitter at an event, this is what I would bring because it's so universal. It's like a white 
holographic iridescent, but even though it's white, it doesn't come off white. It has these blue and pink shimmery tones in it, so you can use it with anything. This is my fairy dust. This is the glitter that I put in my spray bottle, and I will just spritz kids with it and go, you've been dusted by a fairy. It's lovely, it's very, very fine, and it shines. Gorgeous, hands down, favorite fine glitter. Another glittery thing I love is the Global Body Art Gel, and those of you who watched my uh, face painting shop video probably remember that I came back from the UK with this and was like, what do I do with this stuff? I don't even know how to use it. And now I love it. So I will use this with loose chunky glitter on the job and I will mix in a, let's see, I have it here. So I will take loose chunky glitter and then an empty paint pot and I will on the job custom mix glitter mixes for people's faces. Um, but what I like even more about it is being able to take my pots of chunky glitter and make them into gel glitters. So very similar to the Pixie Paint and Festival Glitter, which I also have in my Craft and & Go, and I use them at every gig. I like them very much. But I like being able to control how gel-like my chunky glitters are because I like a really, really chunky consistency. I touch my glitters that I've made, you almost can't feel any gel. They're really, really dry. And I like that because I don't smear the paint as much under designs. And then when I put them on, I'm going to do this down here. And then when I put them on, I get really, really good solid coverage. So I'm really enjoying mixing those myself. Really like the, really like the gel. Didn't think I was going to like it. And it's one of my favorite things. Another favorite of 2018 is my Melted Matte Lipstick. These are all in my kit in my Craft & Go. You can see I have little magnets on them. This is my favorite lipstick in real life. I love Too Faced lipstick, specifically the Melted Matte, but I had been wanting to add this to my kit for some time. I was sick of doing lipstick at parties for little girls, and then they go and they have their birthday cake and their juice boxes, and they come back and they want me to reapply the lipstick over and over and over again because because face paint doesn't wear like lipstick, so it never lasted. And I finally thought, why don't I just add lipstick to my kit? Like, what am I doing? So I love the Too Faced for a few reasons, specifically for, for face painting, because one, they have cool colors, like this turquoise for mermaids, the gold for really funky designs, the bright, bright colors, and then lots of shimmers. So these are the ones that I have currently in my kit. There's one more I want to get that's purple, like lilac and it's called Unicorn, and I just feel like I have to have it, and I just need to go pick it up. So anyways, what I do with these is I simply... Let me put these down so I can show you. So I don't use the lipstick applicator itself on little girls the same way you would, you know, wouldn't do that if you were doing makeup clients. What I do is I pull out the wand, I pull some onto the lip of the applicator or the um, pot and then I take my disposable applicator and I lift off kind of a chunk with the disposable applicator and I apply it on the little girl's lips. Did this at an event yesterday, it worked perfectly. All you need with this formula, which is the other reason I like this particular lipstick for this, um, is just a little bit, goes a really long way. It's very, very pigmented, so I don't have to go back into the lipstick and contaminate it. And it also, since it dries down matte, all the little girls went and they ate and they drank and two hours later, their lipstick was still on. So it's a long wearing formula. It did exactly what I wanted it to do. Absolutely one of my favorites in real life. Almost any video you have seen me wear lipstick, it's this lipstick. I have so many of these. So it was kind of an easy transition for me to put them in my face painting kit because I love them so much. And after I've done it a few times, I can now highly recommend doing this. So use whatever favorite lipstick you have, but these are my favorite. I love them. Thank you, Too Faced.
You guys have probably seen me use this. It's the rinse well, and this allows you to have clean water on the job, which is just a miracle for face painters. I absolutely love it. I, in 2018, this is the only container I brought with me. I didn't even bring my other containers for rinsing brushes. It is really important to me to have clean water. I also think my clients appreciate it when they see me using clean water, they notice and it's just a total lifesaver. I absolutely love it. So at gigs, what I do is I have about three containers of these and there was some water in it because I just did a gig yesterday. <laughs> um, so the one you use with the rinse well has a hole in it, but then you can buy extra containers with a solid lid so that you have containers of water. So I will bring two or three of these with me to a gig. I stick them in my backpack. So I always have clean water. I can switch it out as much as I need to. Very, very easy and I love it. I will absolutely put a link to this below so you guys can try it if you haven't. Um, if you've never seen me use this, I do have a video on my Instagram. It's Ariel underscore paints. You can go check it out and I show you what it looks like to put a brush in, rinse it out, and get clean water back. So go check that out if you haven't seen it. Absolutely love this and could not live without it. I have a few more favorites that are Too Faced products. This is the Too Faced Hangover 3-in-1 uh, Cure, which, I mean, it says it's a setting spray and a primer. I don't use it for either of those things. I use it at the end of the night when I take my makeup off, and then I, I always moisturize, and I use a toner and all that stuff. And then I love to just spray this all over me. I also will just, like, use it as perfume. <laughs> because I am obsessed with this scent. I love it so much. It's like rose water, coconut. It's just delicious. It makes me feel really fresh. If I don't have makeup on, sometimes I'll just put it on to just hydrate my skin. I have a travel one of these as well. My light is really reflecting off of it, so I don't know if you can see it. I absolutely love this so much. It's one of my favorite things I can't live without, and I will spray it on myself sometimes four or five times a day. I love it so much. Highly recommend it. Another Too Faced product I'm obsessed with, which you guys might have seen this in a video I used it, is the Unicorn Tears Lip Gloss. Some days when I just don't feel like wearing lipstick or my lips just feel dry, I but I still want something on my lips, I will use this, which today I just wasn't in the mood for lipstick. So I put on just a kind of a nude lip liner and then this stuff, and it smells like cotton candy and it's just delicious and it's so soft and so moist but it gives your lips like just a little holographic fun without having to wear like a full-on lip absolutely love this stuff and there's a unicorn on it so you know I have to like it because I just love unicorns so much so another one of my obsessions is this dove exfoliant oh my gosh I I'm so in love with this. Again, it's a scent thing. Oh, this smells like birthday cake and coconut. I love it. When I'm in the shower and I think to myself like, oh, I don't really want to exfoliate today. That sounds hard. And then I open this up and I am just like, oh, why didn't I want to exfoliate? I just, oh, I can't stand it. If you could eat it, I would eat it. It's so good. It's the exfoliating body polish, crushed macadamia and rice milk. I don't care what's in it. It smells like birthday cake. You know, if you've had birthday cake flavored anything, that's what it smells like to me. I give this away as gifts because I am obsessed with it and I love it. If you haven't tried it, try it. I guarantee you, you are going to love it. And if you don't love it, you can send yours to me and I will use it because I'm obsessed. Another one of my absolute obsessions that I buy so much of is the Their Real Mascara. I hate fake lashes. I love fake lashes on other people. I think they look great. I hate them on me. I get them glued in the wrong spot. I always have glue like on my eyelashes that I can't get off. I hate it, but I want to look like I have 
fake eyelashes. So I use this stuff and I love it. I have tried so many other mascaras and they always end up all over me like tubing mascaras just like fall off of me by the end of the day. This mascara never transfers. I never have that mascara raccoon look underneath my eyes. I love this mascara. If they ever discontinued it, I would freak out. I think it's from Benefit. Is that right? Oh yeah, Benefit, which I use their brow stuff too. Great brand. Love this mascara so much. Um, I will show you guys a quick video of what it looks like one eye without the mascara and one eye with mascara and then how I apply it so that I look like I have fake lashes. So here it is. So here I am with one eye done and you can see hopefully a pretty dramatic difference. My other eye looks like I don't even have lashes and I really like this mascara because the formula you can build up and you can get those really spidery lashes if you want or you can just do a light coat. I also love the brush is kind of like a spoolie so for my bottom lashes I use the tip to coat them and then brush them out and you can also get that spoolie in kind of the corner of your eyes to really make your lashes pop. Absolute favorite mascara. If you guys struggle with finding a good one, try it. Okay, so you can see I absolutely love this mascara. I think it gives me the most, you know, fake eyelash. That's my fake, that's the international sign for fake eyelash, just in case you didn't know. It's not really, but it is now. Um, so I think it gives me just the most like, but ow, like big lashes without having to use fake lashes because I freaking hate them. Okay, so another thing that I feel like I have to mention are these shout wipes. Have you guys used these? Do you know they exist? Are you messy like me? Now I feel like it's an infomercial. <laughs> I am a disaster. I, right before filming this, looked down and I had makeup all over the collar of this sparkly shirt that I'll probably wear on New Year's. <laughs> and I was like, no, these shout wipes Oh my gosh, I used the Tide Pen years ago and it did not work for me. These are brilliant. I ruin silk shirts like it's going out of style. I've thrown away so many shirts until I got this stuff. I use it on silk, I use it on sweatshirts, on my pants, anything. They're little like portable wipes, just like little hand sanitizer wipes you would bring around for your kids. So I have those too that I put in my bag, but I always have these little shout wipes. And when somebody gets something on themselves, I almost get excited. I'm like, oh, here, use one of my shout wipes. It actually takes stains out. I love these because I'm just like a hot mess. I just like dribble sriracha on myself and I'm always in like a silk shirt that I am going to ruin. So these have saved my clothing. Get these if you don't have them. I will put a link below. I love them. Okay, the last couple things I'm going to talk about are hair products that I cannot live without and they're really hair machines. This Dyson hair dryer, I know this is so stupid expensive, but I'm telling you right now, if you've been debating getting it, it's amazing. I have actually really, really curly, kinky hair, and I blow it out and I straighten it every day of my life. This hair dryer is amazing. Um, first off, the barrel of it is really lightweight because the motor is actually in the handle so it's easier to hold easier to do a blowout on yourself which has always been really hard for me um, I love the fact that the attachments are magnetic because they don't heat up and fall off like my other hair dryers and I've gone through two hair dryers this year actually two expensive ionic hair dryers both of which were about $200 I blew them out they stopped working so I talked myself in to an investment of a hair dryer that was more expensive and I do not regret it. One of the biggest reasons I like it too is because after painting for all these years, I've been painting for about 20 years now, not face painting for 20 years, but being a professional artist and I have terrible arthritis in my fingers. I am 36 years old and I have arthritis. My fingers and my hands hurt, but this is so lightweight that it's easier for me to do a blowout on myself, which I blew out my hair today. I didn't curl it or do anything to it. I did like a traditional round brush blowout and it was easy. 
it was so easy. This is so powerful. I don't have to have it on the hottest or the strongest setting, which usually every other hair dryer I do. So it's amazing. Um, I went through two really expensive hair dryers this year and I threw them away and decided that the Dyson was an investment I wanted to make. I've only had it for a couple weeks now and I am so in love with it that I've ordered the travel case so that I can bring it with me everywhere I go. This thing is absolutely amazing. I wish you guys could feel it. Um, I first tried it at my salon. I go to a really nice salon. They had a couple, so she let me kind of hold it and play with it a little, a little bit. So I felt pretty confident that I was going to like it, but I know it's an expensive purchase and a scary purchase because I was scared to buy it, but oh my gosh totally love it. It's amazing. So if you guys have crazy hair like me or you do your hair every day like I do, then I highly recommend it. It's awesome. The other thing I can't live without is my time iron. This is a curler and a flat iron in one. It is a very, very unique machine because it's kind of scissors together like that. Um, I absolutely love this. It was also designed and created by a woman in Iowa, which is the state that I live in. So I have tons of Iowa pride, which is one of the reasons I wanted to try this. But I also saw so many videos of girls like curling, like barrel curling their hair most of my videos besides today I did that traditional kind of blowout with the um Dyson hair dryer because I just wanted to try it but typically in my videos I have kind of a barrel curl going on in my hair and this is what I use I've had this for maybe I don't know six months now I absolutely love it. If you want to see how this works, I will do a time lapse of me curling my hair with this at the very, very end of the video so you can watch that and see. The brilliant thing about this is that you can do like the 70s like barrel curled hair in no joke six minutes if you're being slow and particular about it. I have timed myself multiple times. If I'm doing it and being really careful, it could take me six minutes to do like big prom hair, barrel curled hair. Um, I can do it in four minutes if I'm in a really big hurry and I just want to give some volume to my hair. But I really, really love this. It's also a little pricey. I believe you can get it on Amazon. I'll put a link below if I find a, a link to it. Um, but gosh, I really, really like this. Before I was using this, I was using a straight iron and curling my hair, which is really tricky. Um, it's just not that easy to do. I taught myself how to do it and I got good at it. But it wasn't very easy. So highly recommend this. I absolutely love it. Okay, so one of my absolute favorite things is my craft and go. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I would not be a face painter anymore if it wasn't for my craft and go. I was so sick of going to events and pulling out all of my stuff and lining it up on a table and then my the table was a mess and then it took me forever to pack up and as I'm packing up all my stuff, kids still want to be painted and it was not fun for me. It was starting to get really, really hard. The Craft & Go has made my life so much easier. I absolutely love it. If you've not seen any of my Craft & Go videos, I will put a card up above so that you can go and watch them all together. Um, if you guys want to see an updated Craft & Go video, let me know. I'm happy to do it. I have changed a few things in my kit because I'm always changing and always evolving my kit. But absolutely, hands down, love the Craft & Go. It is amazing. Um, the other thing that I love is podcasts. One of my favorite podcasts lately is the Daft as a Brush podcast. If you guys have not listened to this, oh my gosh, go listen to it. It is by Donna Godfrey, who owns Yorkshire Face Paint and Debs Mills. They are hilarious and adorable and infectious. They talk about all things face painting. You can write into them, ask questions, and be involved in the conversation as well. They also have a Facebook group, Daft as a Brush. 
It is so much fun to listen to. I highly recommend you guys turn it on while you're painting, while you're driving to gigs. Um, so entertaining and so fun to have a podcast about face painting. I love podcasts anyways, but having a face painting one is so much fun. And I tell you what, if you don't laugh and giggle at those two having fun with each other, then you have no sense of humor. So you have got to go listen to it. It is so funny and brilliant, and I absolutely love it. All right, guys, those were my favorites for 2018. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope there's a few things that you want to try. And I am looking forward to 2019 with you. Please, as always, like, subscribe, ring the bell so that you can get involved in contests that I hold throughout the year. And comment down below. Tell me what videos you guys want to see. Tell me what your favorite things are. Is there something you love that I don't know about, that I don't use? Tell me so I can try it. Thank you guys so much for a wonderful year. I cannot wait to spend 2019 with you. I hope you have a wonderful, happy, and safe new year. As always, like, subscribe, follow me on social media, and I will see you in my next video. So you can see before I curl my hair, this is just like flat ironed from this morning. I have very, very, very straight hair and I am going to take my time iron and I am just going to start to pull my hair through it. You want to go slower in the middle and a little bit faster at the ends and you are going to get a pretty tight curl. Now I don't leave my hair in these tight curls, but what I do is run the iron through my hair. You can see I go a little bit faster at the ends and then I flip it back and I let it stay in that tight, tight curl and then I comb it out in the end. So I go through and I do my entire hair like this. In this video, I went ahead and I sectioned it off. So I section off the top crown. I go through and I do the bottom and then I section off the middle and then the top and I go through and I just run it all right through my hair. I'm talking to my daughter, so that's why my lips are moving. You can see those really, really tight curls, right? So now I'm going through and doing the top, and you do want to let the curl cool off. So this is also titanium plates on this, so it is hot, hot, hot. You do not have to keep the hair in it very long. Look at that tight little curl. If you were going for tight curls, great. I'm never going for tight curls because my hair is already curly and I'm trying to do the opposite, but I like to have big hair. So this gives me like big fancy hair. I always joke and say it's my prom hair, but it gives me that look without trying that hard. And I kid you not, I can do this in four to six minutes. Most of the time, I don't even pin up my hair. I just pull sections and run it through because I like it to be kind of messy and imperfect. So I'm really not that like good at it. And I'm not that good at doing hair, but this thing is like so amazing. I love it. So I'm getting close to the end and you can see now it's all in these tight little curls. So this is where I usually go and grab a nice big comb. Make sure everything's cooled off when you do this and I just have a nice big toothed comb and I just start brushing them out. I will flip my head over and run my hands through it, my fingers through the curls, but I really separate them because I don't want like Shirley Temple curls. I just want big, voluminous hair. So let me check it out, make sure I did a good enough job. And if I feel like I kind of need more volume somewhere, like right at the top, I'll run it back through and just do part of a curl just to give it some volume. And then I take my uh, big, sexy hair hairspray and I usually spray it to give it some volume. And then I just shake my hair out. I am really, really messy about this. So I just run my hands through it, shake it out. And then I have really my everyday hair. I mean, this is my go-to hair look. I have very long hair, as you can 
uh, see in this video. You can't even see the ends of it. But this way I don't have stick straight hair and I don't have curly hair and it's just so easy. Um, try to show you the back too. I love the way the back looks when I do this because it's just like big and bouncy and I just love it. It makes me feel really good. It's my favorite way to do my hair and the time iron makes it so crazy easy.